This time on Distant Shores, we do a deep dive into the 48 volt wiring system, check out the installation, and see why we think it's worth moving up from a traditional 12 volt system. We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. We've been cruising and living aboard for 34 years, documenting the sailing lifestyle. Join us for the building of our fifth boat, a custom aluminum Orion 49. Launch is just a few months away now, and one of the biggest ongoing projects is the wiring and systems installation. From the first time I was aboard an Exhale yacht, I was impressed with the very tidy way the electrical systems were being organized. Now let's check in and see how the wiring install is progressing on Distant Shores 4. I thought it would be interesting to see how we will be able to follow a wire using the wiring diagram and ask Daniel to give a demonstration. If we pick, say, the bow thruster and... I am. Um... We go uh, right in. <clears throat> we, we, uh, we are working with a, a schedule where's all numbers of cables in it. So we have uh, different kind of cables. This is the size of the cables that's inside. And now we go to see probably the bow thruster. It's that number. The bow thruster is a Lumar unit running at 48 volts, so the wiring is pretty small, just 70 square millimeters. If this was a 12 volt unit, it would draw 500 amps of electricity and therefore require a large cable basically four times as big. It's that number, and I can show it. Let's go, take a look. The bow thruster is the second largest electric motor in the boat, using six kilowatts of power <clears throat> and developing roughly eight horsepower at the propeller when it is used to push the bow over when maneuvering. So is the bow thrust already in? Yeah. Bow thrust is in. These are the power cables. So, which this number you can see, it's also on the map. So that's the same number that's listed as being... Yeah, so we can find it anywhere in the ship because there are a lot of cables. You can sh I show it. So now the cable's going to run back to yeah, yeah. Going through the power bank. Through the pipe, underneath the isolation, and we can trace it. Yeah, go ahead. Through here, to these pipes, going through this pipe. Because 48 volt wiring requires these thinner cables, it's also much lighter, saving more than 50 kilos, and allowing the cables to run easily through these conduits. You can see it's here, out of the pipe, goes through here. These are the bow thruster cable you just saw. These are the other cables for the batteries. The, they are here. So this is where the batteries are going yeah, to be? It's going to be the area here. where the batteries. So this, this is the plus on the battery. But the bow thruster is going through here. And we have a tech, technical room behind the engine. And we go. Yeah, let's in. go take a look. You must be pretty good at going in and out of this locker, right? <laughs> yes, I do it a lot. And so, you can see here, that's the same number on the DC distribution. And that goes the fuse in it, and so get the bow thruster have power. That's the same cable going to the front. So that's the, into the 48 volt bus? Eight, yes, yes. A bus, or bus bar, is the backbone for the power system, allowing connections to be made. In this case, the 48 volt connections between all the components that run at 48 volts. That means our bow thruster, winches, anchor windlass, shore power charger inverter, and swing keel hydraulic pump. Plus, of course, our hybrid electric drive motor and the lithium batteries divided into two large 48 volt banks. Remember, voltage is like the pressure on the electrons as they flow. The voltage of the battery supply must match the voltage the equipment is designed for. The hydraulic keel pump is designed to work at 48 volts and will not operate at 12 or 24 volts. Check out this video we made a few years ago as an electrical refresher. At the risk of oversimplifying, electricity is just electrons flowing along wires or stored in batteries. Volts are the pressure of the electrons and amps are the quantity of electrons. Watts are the product of volts times amps, taking into account both the pressure and the quantity. And so also we have a 24 volt 
inside the ship. That's for the lightning. Yeah. I can show it here. Many marine devices we need yeah. aren't available yet in 48 volt versions. Lighting, bilge pumps, autopilot drives, fans, and many other marine must haves are available in 24 volts, but not yet for 48 volt systems. So, in addition to the 48 volt system, we will also have a smaller 24 volt battery bank and a 24 volt bus to connect the 24 volt devices. Daniel shows us the location. Under here, it's also a technical room. That's for the 20, 24 volts. And you can see we have here also a number, number two. That's for the lightning. Cable number two light yeah, somewhere. Lightning. So somewhere in all this boat is a number two. Yes, right? yes. And now we have uh, a map on it that shows everything, numbers. And so this is basically fixtures. These are yeah, this, some this, sort of a light or something yeah, there. Yeah, that's a reading light with the switch. And that's a normal light. And that's a, a switch. For that one. So at this point, all the wires have been run through conduits per this drawing and labeled, of course. So Daniel shows us how we can use the wiring diagram to learn which wire we should be looking for to power the number two light over the forward double berth. And number two, I know, to the front, but it's here, it's not on the drawing. You yeah. can look at it, it's going also to all the pipes to the front. So the number two, so you've got some extra wire here just to make sure you have enough to connect it yeah, all up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have all spare wires also, and now everything has to be uh, engineered. Yeah. That's, that's, that's easier. And we can look also in the front. And also here, we have number two. Okay, number you found it again. So yes. this one's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it all works. Yeah. Yay. And we put a light on it, we put the power on it, and the switch, and it has to be working. So this one has a switch, it's a separate wire. Yeah. 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 We always take the cable through the distribution center, I, I mean it, and the switch also. Just when you have to change something, we can plug it plug it in something else and it's changed. This will be great for troubleshooting in the future. And this attention to detail with the installations was a big part of the reason we chose these guys to build our new boat. So this is just the working drawing yeah, you've got? Yeah, it's working drawing and... Uh, so like, it's a special, specialized one, including the little panels where you're gonna... Yeah, that's all the batteries. These are the batteries. And then there's the, the wire numbers are shown. Yes. Oh, well, that's the 24 volt bank yeah. and the 48 Yeah, volt. yeah, yeah. The two banks in, in the same... And, uh, and that's all the numbers to the distribution. These are the distribution what's underneath, and it's going to be the 24 volts. It's going to be there. Yep. The 24 volt bus construction is underway and looking very tidy. It will include the Selden electric furling drive units for the mainsail as well as the headsails. So this is the result of our conversations with you, and then you yeah. created this drawing yeah. to fulfill yeah. that yeah. Yeah. and working yeah. from that. Yeah, yeah. And, but then you had to figure out where to put all these things. Right. Yeah, yeah we, we, had a plan. we had a plan, and then, then also that, that's a hydro hydraulic for the keel, and it goes in the front behind the keel, and also the table goes through here. So, right to 48 also. Yeah, yeah, and also no, the, so, the solar panels goes to the, the multi, multi. It's on it here. Well, happy holidays everyone. Cheryl and I are very excited to see the progress on Distant Shores 4 and are heading home to Canada now to celebrate Christmas with our families. But we'll be back in January to film some more updates for you. We'll also be conducting a couple of seminars at the shipyard on Saturday, January 13th for anyone thinking of doing some long-distance cruising in an aluminum sailboat. Details for registering are in the description below. It would be great to see you there! If you have any questions for our next video, throw a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video and found it informative, please give it a thumbs up. And subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks for watching!